Hello everyone. Today we're going to calculate the slope from two points. From our first video on slopes, we saw that the slope was the rise over the run. In this case, we would rise 1, 2, 3, and we would run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for a slope of 3 fifths. But we don't always have a graph for us to count our rise and our run to get our slope. In which case, we can use two points such as this one, 2 and 1, and this one over here, 7 and 4, to calculate the slope. We said that the slope was the difference of the y-coordinates divided by the difference of the x-coordinates, and we're going to use this equation right here to help us calculate along with our two points. Now, what should we call what? In our first ordered pair, this will be x1 and this will be y1. Why? Well, it's the first point we come across coming from left to right. This next point we will call x2 and y2. Now we're going to place the numbers in the equation like so. Our y2 is right here and our y1 is right here. Our x-coordinates, our x2 is right here, represented by this number, and our x1 is right here. Notice that these numbers underneath these numbers are subscripts. They're not exponents. They're simply there to designate the second y versus the first y. They are not exponents. So we will take our y2, which is 4, and subtract from it our y1, which in this case is 1, and we will take our x2, which in this case is 7, and subtract from it our x1, which in this case happens to be 2. 4 take away 1 is going to give me 3, and 7 take away 2 is going to give me 5. We're going to get 3 fifths, which is the slope we got from the first drawing. See, this is the graph from before, and our slope is indeed 3 fifths as well. Now, you might be asking me right now, what if we used the second point first, and the first point second, would it make a difference in our slope? And it would not. Watch. This time we'll use 7, 4 as our first point and 2, 1 as our second point. We will label them from left to right as we've done before. This will be x1, y1, x2, y2. Our equation is the same and we will substitute the numbers where they need to go. Our y2 is 1, so I'm going to place it right here and subtract from it my y1, which is 4. In the denominator, my x2 is 2, and I will subtract from it the x1, which is 7. So in the numerator, if I have 1 but take away 4, I owe 3. And if I have 2 and O7 in the denominator, I owe 5. When we divide two negative numbers, we get a positive number. And we see that the slope is 3 fifths, as it was when the points were ordered the other way around. It does not make a difference. All right, in this example, we can see we have some negatives, so we're going to have to proceed with caution. But we still label our points x1, y1, x2, y2. And we see that our y2 is negative 6, so I'm going to place it where y2 goes. And now my y1 is negative 4, and I'm going to place it where y1 goes. And so now we notice something that we saw when we were adding and subtracting integers, that when we have two negatives together, 
that this will become a positive for the number that's following, which is 4. So we owe 6, but we have 4. So in this numerator, I owe 2. Our x2 is 5, so we're going to place it where we see x2. And our x1 is 2, so we're going to place it where we see x1. So in the denominator, we have 5 take away 2, which is 3. So our slope is negative 2 thirds. Here's our next example. We're going to label our points. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to place them directly in the equation this time. So I have 2, the minus from the equation, minus 2. In my denominator, my x2 is negative 1. I have the minus from the equation, and I have 7. So in the numerator, 2 take away 2 is going to give me 0. And in the denominator, I'm going to have negative 8. This we've seen before. This is 0 slope. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here's our slope, and we have 0 as the rise, which means that from our first point, we're not going to rise anywhere, as we've seen occurs. But we do have a run, and we're going to run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's our run. This is going to give us 0 slope. And let's recall how we remembered this. The sticks in 0 are horizontal, as is this line, which is horizontal. And we can see that there is no inclination. Here we have our next example. This I'll label as x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to take my y2, which is negative 2. I'm going to subtract from it my y1, which is 1. In my denominator, my x2 is 2, and I'm going to subtract from it my x1, which is 0. So in my numerator, I owe 2, and I owe 1, so I owe 3. And in the denominator, 2 take away 0 will give me 2. This will give us a slope of negative 3 over 2. Here's our last example, and we're going to label the points. My y2 is negative 2, and from it I'm going to subtract the y1, which is 4. And in the denominator, my x2 is 5, and I'm going to subtract from it 5. So in the numerator, I owe 2 and I owe 4, so I owe 6. And in the denominator, 5 take away 5 is going to give me 0. We have seen this before. This is undefined. We can't divide by 0. And this is going to give us a situation that's called no slope. And I'm going to show you what this looks like graphically. Here's the graph. And we see that we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the rise is negative 6. But our run, we don't run from the first point to the second point. It's 0. This is no slope. How does this word help us remember? Well, in the n, we have two vertical lines, which is like the vertical line of the graph. I just wanted to review one thing before we go. If we had two points that were negative, we would do the exact same thing, but we need to remember that we respect this negative from the equation. It stays there fixed, regardless of what the point is. So in this case, my y2 would be negative 7. The negative from the equation would be there. My y1 is negative 3. And remember that these negatives will combine to make a positive for 3. In the denominator, my x2 is negative 5. The negative from the equation is here. 
my x1 is negative 2. So this negative and this negative will make a positive. So in my numerator, I have negative 7 plus 3 will give me negative 4. And in the denominator, I owe 5, I have 2, I owe 3. When I divide a negative by a negative, I end up with a positive 4 thirds. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos. And if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.